Cruise Checklist This checklist ensures that the aircraft is at the desired or assigned altitude for the flight, as well as that the engine is leaned for the most efficient performance. Note, while conducting a cruise checklist, the pilot must reference their checklists to confirm all items have been completed. At first, pilots will rely on the checklist to guide their check, but with experience, pilots begin doing the required pre-flight checklist line items and then verifying by reviewing the checklist. The cruise checklist is started by setting the power to the planned RPMs based on their navigation log or 2300 RPMs for normal training flights. Next, the pilot leans the aircraft to the best efficiency in fuel burn. Last, the pilot ensures that the appropriate navigation and strobe lights are on. In some of Epic's aircraft, the taxi light can be turned on and will flash from left to right, known as recognition or recog. Descent Checklist As the pilot is nearing their destination airport, they should conduct a descent checklist. This checklist is used to verify that the aircraft and pilot are ready for landing based on the current weather observation at the destination airport, as well as the type of approach the pilot will be making. For instance, if the pilot is conducting an instrument or visual approach, this checklist also ensures that the engine and brake systems of the aircraft are functioning safely for landing. Note, while conducting the descent checklist, the pilot must reference their checklists to confirm all items have been checked beginning in descent. At first, pilots will rely on the checklist to guide their check, but with experience, pilots begin doing the required pre-flight checklist line items and then verifying by reviewing the checklist. The pilot should obtain the latest ATIS or AWOS weather information to help plan the appropriate runway to land on and prepare for any crosswind conditions. The altimeters are then adjusted to the barometric pressure obtained in the ATIS or AWOS. The fuel selector valve is turned to the both position and the throttle is adjusted for the descent, which is generally 1800 to 1900 RPMs, and the mixture brought to the full rich position. The pilot should also ensure the proper navigation course is displayed on the PFD by pressing the CDI soft key on the PFD. The pilot then briefs the approach to the runway. The landing light is turned on, and the brakes are applied to ensure they are functioning properly. If the brakes feel spongy or depressed and do not return to their original position, the pilot must plan to land with malfunctioning brakes. Lastly, the pilot should consider the appropriate approach speed based on the current weather conditions. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.